In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. One of my earliest childhood memories is of up in my grandparents' tenement in Glasgow, where they had a wonderful fireplace in the front room. And as a child, I would help my grandmother to clean out the fireplace, to rake the ashes, then take them down to the bin. I mention that because ashes are the theme of today, but it's a very strange theme for church. Ashes are meant to be thrown away. They are meant to be discarded. They're not precious things. They're not things to treasure. The symbolism of ashes as a sign of repentance is that we acknowledge that there are things in our lives that need to be thrown away, things that do not need to be cherished, habits, patterns of behavior, attitudes, sin. This is the theme of Lent, the journey that we are now setting out on, that we acknowledge there are ashes in our lives, things that we need to rake and throw out. And we ask the Lord's help so that we may examine our lives with honesty over this 40 day journey, so that we may rejoice to rise with Jesus in the new waters of baptism at Easter. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may begin with holy fasting this campaign of Christian service, so that as we take up battle against spiritual evils, we may be armed with the weapons of self-restraint. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Joel. Now, now, it is the Lord who speaks. Come back to me with all your heart, fasting, weeping, mourning. Let your hearts be broken not your garments torn. Turn to the Lord your God again, for he is all tenderness and compassion, slow to anger, rich in graciousness, and ready to relent. Who knows if he will not turn again, will not relent, will not leave a blessing as he passes, oblation and libation for the Lord your God. Sound the trumpet in Zion, Order a fast, proclaim a solemn assembly, call the people together, summon the community, assemble the elders, gather the children, even the infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his bedroom and the bride her alcove. Between vestibule and altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, lament. Let them say, spare your people, Lord, do not make your heritage a thing of shame, a byword for the nations. Why should it be said among the nations, where is their God? Then the Lord, jealous on behalf of his land, took pity on his people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be God. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy on me, God, in your kindness. In your compassion, blot out my offence. Or wash me more and more from your guilt and cleanse me from my sin. Have, have mercy, mercy on us, us, O Lord, for we have sinned. My offences truly, I know them. My sin is always before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned. What is evil in your sight, I have done. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned. A pure heart create for me, O God. Put a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, nor deprive me of your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned. Give me again the joy of your help. With a spirit of fervour sustain me. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. 
Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. We are ambassadors for Christ. It is as though God were appealing through us, and the appeal that we make in Christ's name is, be reconciled to God. For our sake, God made the sinless one into sin, so that in him we might become the goodness of God. As his fellow workers, we beg you once again not to neglect the grace of God that you have received. For he says, at the favourable time, I have listened to you. On the day of salvation, I came to your help. Well, now is the favourable time. This is the day of salvation. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Be careful not to parade your good deeds before others to attract their notice. By doing this, you will lose all reward from your Father in heaven. So, when you give alms, do not have it trumpeted before you. This is what the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets to win people's admiration. I tell you solemnly, they have had their reward. But when you give alms, your left hand must not know what your right hand is doing. Your alms giving must be secret, and your father, who sees all that is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not imitate the hypocrites. They love to say their prayers standing up in the synagogues and at the street corners for people to see them. I tell you solemnly, they have had their reward. But when you pray, go to your private room, and when you've shut your door, pray to your father, who is in that secret place. And your father, who sees all that is done in secret, will reward you. When you fast, do not put on a gloomy look, as the hypocrites do. They pull long faces to let people know they are fasting. I tell you solemnly, they have had their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that no one will know you are fasting except your Father who sees all that is done in secret. And your Father who sees all that is done in secret will reward you. The Gospel of the Lord. Just the briefest of thoughts. One of the things that people often say to me, and you might well have said this yourself, is, Oh, Father, I know I'm not a saint. The follow-up question to that is, why not? And that's often where people don't know the answer. Well, I know I'm not perfect, but I'm not really sure why. Lent is a season for us to face up to that question. If I'm not a saint, why am I not a saint? What is stopping me from being a saint? What is there in my life that stops me from being holy? The reason that Lent lasts 40 days and not two or three is to give us time really to get into that question. Over the next few weeks, we've got to keep coming back to it. Okay, if I'm not a saint, why am I not a saint? I've got this thing here. What am I going to do about it? Oh, there's all this bad habit. Yep, yeah, I can sort that out. I need to give this up. I need to change this. So over this journey, we keep that question close to us. Why am I not a saint? What's stopping me? To actually answer that question will demand a bit of effort. Perhaps that's why Lent isn't all year round. Sometimes we just need to use a bit of time to make that special effort, to get into that question. But this is what Jesus wants us to do. He wants us to be happy as saints. He wants us to enjoy holiness. He wants us to be free of all of those ills that affect human beings, that affect our world. This is his will for us. And that's why Jesus leads us into this season. That's why we begin with ashes, a sign of imperfection, something to be thrown away. 
but we don't expect to achieve it all today. This is just the beginning of that journey. So today, let's pray that the Lord Jesus will help and guide us, that we can ask ourselves that question, what's stopping me being a saint? And with his help, over the course of this holy season, we'll be able to step closer and closer to that goal of holiness. Could you please stand? Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly ask God our Father that he be pleased to bless with the abundance of his grace these ashes which we will put on our heads in penitence. O God, who desire not the death of sinners but their conversion, mercifully hear our prayers and in your kindness be pleased to bless these ashes, which we intend to receive upon our heads, that we, who acknowledge that we are but ashes and shall return to dust, may, through a steadfast observance of Lent, gain pardon for sins and newness of life, after the likeness of your risen Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. These blessed ashes will be received in silence on your way out of church today. Since you will receive in silence, respond now to the words that would normally be used as the ashes are placed on your heads. And so I ask, will you repent and believe in the gospel? Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we solemnly offer the annual sacrifice for the beginning of Lent, we entreat you, O Lord, that through works of penance and charity, we may turn away from harmful pleasures and cleansed from our sins may become worthy to celebrate devoutly the passion of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For through bodily fasting, you restrain our faults, raise up our minds and bestow both virtue and its rewards through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Though we don't exchange the sign of peace, we do pause for a moment now to pray for the gift of peace in our world in our lives, with our families, our friends, and our enemies. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, 
have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May the sacrament we have received sustain us, O Lord, so that our Lenten fast may be pleasing to you and be for us a healing remedy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. So in a moment, you'll come forward to receive the ashes as directed and then leave church straight away to set out on our Lenten journey. The ashes that we receive are a symbol of our desire to change, of our desire to use this season to be better people. So let's ask that the Lord who wants us to be saints may help us to achieve that. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended.